ARM 7, we have got a um, uh, much more complex architecture compared to say 8051 or 8085 uh, in the sense that uh, it has got the data bus which is uh, 32 bit and the address bus is also 32 bit and this there is, there is no multiplexing of address and data bus so they are separate so address bus is 32 bit here and data bus is 32 bit here. Now we have got uh, um, internally there is a internal bus so one bus is the ALU bus which we call A bus uh, and also it is A bus coming from the register bank and this ALU bus is uh, coming out of the ALU and it is feeding the register bank as well as the address registers. So sometimes uh, we will like to uh, take this uh, register bank uh, values from some of the uh, values from some of the registers to do the operation. So in that case this A bus will be utilized and for storing the result back, so result may be stored back onto the register uh, in this bank register or it may be onto some address register for some uh, for, for uh, further addressing. And uh, we have got a separate incrementer, so this is another important thing that you see here, there is an address incre incrementer. So unlike uh, 8051 where we have got uh, the same ALU which is doing the address incrementation after each instruction here that PC increment operation is done by this incremental module. So, it is totally uh, separated from the other computational overhead of the uh, processor. So, this ALU is responsible for uh, doing the normal operations of the instructions and this incremental is for address incrementing. So, then its output can feed to some register bank or it might go to some address register. So, address register is actually the register which will hold the address which is visible to the outside world. So, whatever be the instruction if ultimately this uh, this memory has to be accessed the address register will contain the address of the location. So, if you are trying to uh, write some uh, data then this write data register will have the value in it that you want to write. So, after uh, putting the address here and uh, data here so you can say enable out. So, this enable out will be uh, the, so this will enable this output onto the data bus. Similarly, if you are trying to read something from the uh, from the memory, then this uh, this is coming to this instruction pipeline as well as read data register. So we will explore this instruction pipeline part later. Um, uh, but essentially, the instruction when it is coming, so in case of uh, 8085 or 8051, we have got a single instruction register where the instruction opcode is coming. But here it is a more pipeline stage, so there will be number of pipeline stages for the operation and this read data register. So, this is uh, uh, if you are reading from data from the program memory, so it will be coming into this. And internally you see that we have got a boots multiplier for doing the multiplication operation. So, for multiplication instruction, so we have got boots multiplier. So, that so that way the ALU is relieved from doing that operation. And we will see that multiplication operation is has also been optimized uh, so that the it takes much less number of cycles compared to normal um, multiplication. Then the barrel shifter is there, so I have already said that you can uh, shift the operand uh, in a single in, in, in a single instruction before doing the um, arithmetic logic operation. So, you can uh, do a shifting of the operand, so multiplication by 2 or division by 2, so multiplication and division by powers of 2, so that can be done by this barrel shifter and many a times particularly in uh, signal processing algorithms. So, you will find that there are um, many uh, many operations that we do are multiplication and divisions by powers of 2. So, those operations can be done uh, uh, very easily in, in this type of architecture. So, coming to the um, pipeline part, so this arm has got uh, uh, this, it, has, it, it, is, it is a pipeline architecture. So, pipeline architecture what do we mean by that is that suppose we have got some uh, functional block, okay. suppose we have got some functional block like this and this functional block it will have some delay. So, it has got a delay of say, uh, say D unit, so it has got a delay of D unit. Now, in a pipeline operation what is done is that this delay this module is divided into a number of sub modules fine. So, I have got this first module, so, so this is the say, say I have got this first module which is say of delay D1, then the output of this stage 
goes to the next stage that has got a delay of d2 and the third uh, the th output of that stage goes to the third stage that has got a delay of d3. So, so the original block of delay d it is divided into three modules like this. So, previously we had a single module with a delay of d and the inputs were coming to that. So, if the delay is d, so you can operate this module at a frequency f equal to 1 by d. So, after every uh, d time unit, so what is the input data when it is coming here, so after d time unit the value will be available here. On the other hand, if I uh, do an implementation like this, then what happens is that this individual uh, module delay, so d1, d2 and d3, so the first data item that you have here, so that will see a total delay of d1 plus d2 plus d3 as the, so that is equal to d, so that it will see that amount of delay. But when this first data item has been, uh, has reached the second uh, uh, module, so the second data item can be fed here and after some time the first data item will reach the third stage of processing, so then this, this will be doing the second one and this will be doing the third data item. So, that way if you have a continuous flow of data, then you can see that after uh, uh, every, uh, uh, after every uh, uh, small amount of time, so this data will be outputted. Like say if, if this, uh, if this uh, d1, so if suppose I have got this d which is the maximum of all these three values, d1, d2 and d3 then we can say that after every d time unit the next sample uh, the next output will be available here because when the first data is coming out the second data is already here so second data will be coming out after the delay of d3 similarly the third data will be coming out after another delay of d3 like that so if d happens to be the maximum of these three stage delays then after every d time unit the data will be available at the output. So, this is the concept of pipelining. So, this pipelining is uh, used in different processors. We have already seen that fetch decode execute pipeline in instruction execution. In case of ARM processor, so the, that it has been made much, uh, it has been used much more. And naturally, since this original functionality D has been divided into three steps D1, D2 and D3. So, d, the, so the small d value is often much less than the capital D value. So, that way I can uh, do the processing at a much higher rate. Okay. So, so, coming back to um, the discussion, this has, so ARM has got uh, this uh, pipelining feature and there are various number of stages of pipelines that are available in different um, versions of the processor. Like ARM 7, it has got three stage pipeline. ARM S and ARM 9 TDMI, so they have got 5 stage pipeline, then ARM 10 has got 6 stage pipeline, ARM 11 has got 8 stage pipeline, so slowly the number of pipeline stages have been increased and with the increasing number of pipeline stages, the advantage is that we can, uh, we can have faster processing. So, first one is the three stage pipeline. So, this is the classical fetch decode execute pipeline. So, it is same as other processors that we have. So, like 8085, 8051, so all of them they do this fetch decode execute pipeline. So, first stage is the fetch stage. So, this fetch stage is responsible for reading the content from the memory. So, it reads the, the instruction from the memory and it will increment the program counter or instruction address register. So, in case of ARM, so in this program counter will call instruction address register. So, that value is incremented so that it can point to the next instruction. So, first stage is the fetch, second stage is the decode. So, decode will decode the instruction. So, it will understand what is the meaning of the opcode and it will prepare the control signals accordingly. So, if you look into this diagram, so this after this instruction has reached here, so it goes to this instruction decoder and control logic and it generates a number of control signals for uh, various modules that we have here. Some of them are for, uh, for some of them are, we um, will explain these uh, remaining terms later, but uh, this is, uh, they are coming to the, uh, they, they, the, these signals will also control the operation of this uh, control logic, 
but overall the instruction reaching here is decoded here and this uh, control signals are generated for the remaining module for other modules that will do the operation. So, the second stage will do this decode and prepare the control signals the third stage it does the actual work. So, what is the actual work? So, it has to read operands from the register file like uh, so it may be that I want to add the content of two registers. So, those two register values will be uh, should be available to the ALU then the ALU will do the operation and then it will write back the value onto the on, uh, value of this of the modified register. So, this way we can uh, do this operation ok the, the operation can be carried out and in case of ARM. So, you will see that uh, whenever we are doing an arithmetic logic operation. So, the operands are always from the register bank. So, you cannot have it from uh, external memory like that directly. So, that is why it is called um, uh, it has uh, it is uh, this uh, here we are uh, mentioning explicitly that it is uh, doing the operation on the register file. So, three stage pipelining the difficulty that we have is that if the every data transfer instruction it will cause the pipeline stall. So, pipeline stall is uh, something like this that. So, I have got this uh, pipelining. So, if uh, the resource is busy like say fetch decode and execute. So, these three stages are there. Now, if this execute stage is also asking to access memory. So, this is also asking to access memory like the instruction that we have may be to save the content of some register onto some memory location. So, that way this uh, instruction will be the using the memory bus. So, I cannot fetch the next instruction. So, there will be uh, th this fetching part will be stalled. So, this type of pipeline stall will occur and if you look into the operations that we have out of, out of these three stages the execute stage it will take the maximum amount of time because it may be doing some complex operation. So, to uh, so this is the problem. So, we have got this uh, it, the every data transfer instruction. So, we will have a pipeline stall because the next instruction cannot be fetched while the memory is being read or written. So, how to solve this problem? So, this problem is solved by going to the Harvard architecture in which the program memory and the data memory they are separate. So, instruction memory and data memory are separated. So, we have got separate uh, address bus and data bus for two types of memories. So, if, if previously the structure was like this, if this was the processor the ARM processor and we have got this as the memory this is the memory. So, we have got this address bus, data bus, control bus like that. Now, in the Harvard architecture you know that it is uh, device it is made like this if this is the processor ARM processor. Now, we have got the program memory and the data memory they are separate. So, this is program memory and we have got the data memory which is separate. Now, what will happen is that when the uh, ARM is asking for program so, it will access the program memory. So, it has got the address bus, data bus and control bus for uh, program for the program part and similarly it will have address data and control bus for the data part for the data memory access. So, this way we have got this uh, uh, the two uh, memory they are separated and the uh, buses are also separate. So, you have uh, you have got the flexibility now that we can go for this uh, this data access will not hamper the fetching of the next instruction from uh, memory. So, instruction and data memory are separated. Second third thing that is done is the, the next uh, stage is to somehow make this uh, uh, operation of this uh, um, the, the execute phase simpler. How do we do this? This register read step is moved to the decode stage. So, in the previous uh, case the execute operation the first thing that it has to do is to get the uh, operands from the register file to the ALU for the operation. So, this is simplified and now we uh, this register read is going to the decode stage. So, decode stage was previously less likely loaded. 
now the load has been increased to make the balancing between the stages so execute stage is also split into three sub stages one for performing arithmetic computation then memory access and then write result back to register file so these are the three uh, stages into which this uh, uh, the, the execute stage is also divided so you have got this uh, um, uh, fetch is there decode and register it that constitutes one stage and this execute stage is divided into three stages so as a result we have got uh, five stage pipeline okay so the here is three and uh, decode one and uh, fetch one so five stage pipeline so this uh, as it is uh, the, there is a balancing in the pipeline that we see now because the decode stage was very uh, lightly loaded so that has been given enough uh, job to do now so it reduces the cpi so cpi stands for clocks per instruction so how many clocks are needed per instruction so in a pipeline fashion so uh, uh, number of the instructions are executed in a pipeline way so you can uh, you can execute more number of instructions so ideally we would like to have one clock per instruction because if i have got uh, one instruction taking say 10 stages and the architecture is a 10 stage pipeline architecture then after every uh, clock cycle one instruction should be complete so that way the ideally the cpi value should be one but it is not possible definitely it is not possible because of the different uh, stage requirements of this uh, instructions and the number of pipeline stages will not always match exactly with the uh, um, size of the, the execution time of the instruction. So, that as a result, uh, it cannot be 1, but it is it, it will reduce the average number of average CPI value. However, it needs the, it uh, leads to another problem which is known as data forwarding. So, what is data forwarding? So, it is uh, like this. So, what we have done is we had the three stage pipeline this fetch, uh, decode and execute, fetch, decode and execute and this execute was three stages. The first stage was register read, first stage was register read, then the next stage was the computation and the third stage was the writing back. So, these were the three stages. Now, what we have done in the modified version, we have got this fetch, this is there, but this decode is made complex. So, decode has got two stages now, decode and this register read, decode and register read, they are the two stages and then we have got this uh, execute one that has got this uh, computation and uh, this writing back these two are there. Now, you can understand uh, the problem because what can happen suppose I have got an instruction like R 1 say R 1 equal to R 2 plus R 3 and uh, we have got an instruction like say R 1 equal to R 2 plus R 3 and the second instruction is say R 4 equal to R 1 into R 5. So, what is happening is that you see this R 1 value that is computing. So, it is available if this is instruction 1 and this is the instruction 2. So, when the instruction 1 comes to this stage or here when the instruction 1 comes to this phase then only the R 1 value will be updated. But when instruction was 1 is in this stage instruction 2 is in the previous stage of the pipeline. So, what is happening is that uh, the instruction 2 is actually not here, uh, instruction 2 will be in the computation phase. So, by this time instruction 2 has already got the value of R 1. So, instruction 2 requires R 1 as one of the operand. So, by this time instruction 2 has already accessed R 1 and but, but that value is not correct because in this program what we mean is that whatever be the output of summation of R 2 and R 3. So, that should be the content of R 1. So, here I am getting some older content of R 1. So, we have to have some sort of uh, scheme which is known as data forwarding. So, what happens is that when the compiler will see that there is a situation like this that some operand value that is being used which is not yet stabilized. So, it is that the destination does not have its value yet. 
so between the stages there should be some way by which this data is forwarded so this alu output r1 should somehow be fed as the operand for the next instruction so the architecture supports this facility and it is the compiler's job to identify those uh, situations and accordingly uh, mark that the data forwarding should take place at those places and then uh, the, the architecture uh, will be the control words will be generated so that it is taken care of so that is the uh, five stage uh, that is about the five stage pipelining so data forwarding may, may be necessary be between the pipeline stages to resolve data dependency so whenever between stages we have got data dependency so either we have to stall the pipeline so that the previous instruction is over then only i go into the fetching of the next instruction or executing the or the register read of the next instruction that so for that much time we have to wait that is pipeline stall or we have to um, do some sort of data forwarding okay, so both are possible so next we will look into six stage pipeline so arm 10 has got six stage pipeline here the decode is split into two pipeline stages as as earlier to decode and register and uh, decode stage performs the decode operation and the register read, read will perform the register read, the reading the register operation and uh, but now a separate adder is introduced in the execution unit to take care of this multiply accumulate type of instructions so instruction decode previously the instruction decode was uh, done in uh, one stage consists doing both decode and register read together now it is divided into two stages so you have got this decode and register read uh, may put together put separately into two stages so you get some uh, sixth stage pipeline and also so the uh, separate adder has been introduced for multiply accumulate type of instruction so multiply accumulate is uh, something like this so multiply accumulate will be doing uh, like this so suppose i have got an operation like this so y equal to sigma ai xi so this is a very common operation in case of signal processing where these xi's are the signal samples this may be signal samples and this ai's are the filter coefficients so this is very common uh, so whenever we are doing any computation in signal processing so this is uh, the, the filtering operations so they often do like this now you see that if you want to write it uh, in a uh, if you want to do it by means of a hardware then what is required is you should have uh, this register which will hold these uh, a values so these are the a values you should have another uh, uh, bank of locations where it will have the x values and then the successive values uh, should be fed to this adder they, they will be fed to the adder and ai and uh, xi that will do that multiplication sorry this is a multiplier so this ai xi will be multiplied and then it should go to an adder where it will be doing the addition part so this is the adder so this this is the y register and this value should come here and we should have a structure like this so this previous value will be added okay and it will be doing like this now if you do not have this particular structure available in the uh, within the processor then what you have to do is you have to write a uh, program where it will be for doing this uh, intermediary calculations and then it will be adding it with y so that way it has to be in a program we have to do that so if uh, if i have a single uh, alu for doing this operation then we have to uh, use that alu for doing the multiplication and then a addition then again multiplication then again addition like that single uh, alu has to be used so in case of uh, arm processor what has been done is one such module has been incorporated into the system so this is called multiply accumulate unit so it will multiply the successive uh, data items coming from ai and xi 
and accumulate the values in the Y register. So in the internally, so we have got this hardware available, so that by a single instruction we can do this multiply accumulate type of operation. So we'll see that uh, in more detail the actual instruction when we uh, go to the instruction set of the processor. So this uh, multiply accumulate uh, is, uh, is done by a separate uh, execution unit that takes care of this uh, multiply accumulate operation. Then we have uh, the instruction and data buses are now 64 bit. Okay, so now the, say the ARM 10, so it has got 64 bit address uh, instruction and data buses. So instead of being 32 bit uh, um, data bus, we have got 64 bit data bus, but internal operation remains as 32 bit only. The advantage we get is the accessing um, the external uh, memory. So uh, in one access, you can get two instructions now. So to because each instruction is 32 bit, so you get two instructions and data bus is uh, also 64 bit. So in one access, so you can get two data items. So that way number of accesses to the outside uh, uh, data memory and program memory will be less and that will help in reducing the uh, complexity in terms of uh, this power consumption of the, of the system because bus activity will uh, lead to bus power consumption and that will lead to uh, at least a heating effect. So the heat of the temperature of the system may be high. So as we said that ARM is de designed to have low power. So this is another avenue by which this power reduction is achieved in uh, ARM 10 processor. 